-hmm. Can you not? Okay, I'm thy Kusk. I'm not going to be doing a Midheaven video today. This is the last time I'm going to film this. And yeah, I, I want to have more relaxed videos on my channel because I'm just out of it. I have a lot going on. I'm trying to, um, you know, put everything together on what I'm doing this year and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm going to be putting out more relaxed videos and probably not follow my schedule. So I'm really sorry about that. Yeah, let's get right into it. I'm going to talk about 12th houses that feel just have really weird dreams or ascendants that have really weird dreams and that's just what this video is going to be about. Um, let's see. First, I have to go with the Taurus ascendant. Me. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is going to be biased. So I'm going to give you some first-hand accounts. If you want me to do a story time talking about all my weird dreams, comment down below because I just have really weird dreams and people are just like, Sam, your dreams are really weird. Um, so yeah, I just, I got the weird dreams, alright? You want the weird dreams? I got the weird dreams, but... <laughs> Anyways, when usually Taurus Ascendants have Aries in the 12th house, um, basically Taurus is very stable while they try to appear stable. This is how they want to appear. And they do. They're the ascendant that can wear sweatpants at a wedding and no one would notice because they're rocking sweatpants. Please do not test that theory if you are a Taurus ascendant. That is a metaphor, but you can rock sweatpants and no one will notice. That is given facts. You know, you can look as comfortable as you want. People still think you're stylish, but you are comfortable. It's kind of just what Taurus does. And also these people's personalities, they may seem very kind and nice and blank. Like, I don't even know. They seem bland. They're like an egg from Arrested Development, okay? They seem very stable and predictable and too chill. Some people think they're stoners. They might not be. They might. I don't know. Depends on the person, but... <laughs> Yeah, they seem stoned out of their mind. That's kind of towards Sunday. They all seem kind of tense. You know, they're like, hi, and you know, you want to befriend them because they seem nice, but they're also pretty tense and they can seem a little, you know, flustered when it comes to people. When talking to people, they're like, and they, you know, may come off as kind of a word that YouTube won't let me use. That's basically towards Sundance. So backtrack that, usually they have Aries in the 12th house, so they hide their rambunctious, um, energetic side to them. And they keep that down inside. And oh boy, this does cause really weird dreams. If, if you don't know, 12th house rules over the subconscious, and the subconscious is linked to dreams and also is like, linked to karma and self-undoing and stuff like that. We're talking about the dreamy side of the 12th house, Pisces, Neptune, whatever you want to call it, but, you know, when Aries is here, or if Mars is in the 12th house even, you know, this is where the energy is prominent, because this Mars, ruled by Aries, is very prominent. Scorpio Mars is not really energetic, but... Aries Mars are, because that's just how they are. You know, the first sign, they want to get through everything. They're like, I want to do this, I want to do that, you know. I can take on the world, and they have a warrior mentality, because they, the, the, they are the warrior, and just how they're built. And when that goes into dreams, there are probably reckless situations in dreams. Um, yeah. I also have Saturn in the 12th house, so that does affect it. I'm not going to really be talking about aspects and planets, so I'm really sorry about that. But, yeah, um, there can be aggressive themes. Like, for me, I have reckless driving. Don't understand it, but it is a thing. <laughs> um, yeah, and just, like, randomness, but it is kind of aggressive. And there's... I have physical activity actually involved in my dreams. And also, I got persecuted for rumors once in my dreams. You know, I should, I should just do a video on my dreams, okay? But yeah, there's 
violence and probably aggression like coming out in dreams because you know that's Aries's thing they're bold on the positive side but they're also kind of aggressive on the negative side but their aggression's just like ah and then it stops <laughs> so yeah now let's get into cancer ascendant these are the sad boy ascendants these are the people who just look sad or they just seem really uncomfortable they're like tour ascendants but in like the sense that they seem tense but they seem like really tense you know <laughs> they're like really uncomfortable like they do seem very beautiful since they have like giant eyes and stuff but for the most part they do have giant eyes though but you know they're like still a little you know closed off because they have a shell and they like their shell they're not capricorn their sister they're totally not their sister their sister wants to go after things like aries but it's kind of a grandpa so they're just like eh outside worlds <laughs> you know cancer's like I like the inside world, man. It's cool in here. So, you know, that's like kind of Cancer's thing. You know, they just want to live in their shell because, you know, they like their shell. They don't know what's out in the outside world. They'll let a few people in. They might let the wrong people in. That's just what they do. But Gemini's in their 12th house, typically. And when Gemini's here, you know, Gemini's a curious sign. They're the learning sign. They're the critical thinkers. They're the humorous ones. So keep that in mind, they're ruled by Mercury, which speeds everything up. Like if you, have you seen a Mercury ruled moon? Like someone with a Gemini or Virgo moon or Mercury aspecting it? Like talk to them about their emotions. You will, and well, if you can get them to open up about their emotions, like get them to open up about their emotions, it's just going to be a whirlwind, all right? But anyways, you know, Mercury's here, um, and just their dreams might be fast-paced. There might be many dreams in a night. There might be very weird side comments and humor involved in their dreams. Like, I would think that because Gemini's there. So, and Gemini's very witty, like I said. And, you know, they keep their curiosity deep down inside, like Taurus keeps down aggression, <laughs> Cancer keeps down curiosity on the outside world, and an ability to open up to any random stranger on the street. Because, you know, Gemini's also sociable as an air sign, so, you know, they keep their curiosity about the world in their subconscious and it comes out in their dreams. So, you know, there's more humor and probably dreaming about other places too, stuff like that. But then now we're just going to go on to Cancer's lovely square Libra, who is a masculine sign, cardinal sign, ruled by a feminine planet. Squ like they're also exalt in their square that totally has nothing in common with this planet. Like, I don't know, Libras are just weird. All right, they're they can fit in whatever they want to. They can do whatever they want, because they can just fit anywhere. This is kind of what they do. <laughs> so, you know, this is on the Senate. Every, the charts flipped if there's no interceptions. The whole entire charts just flipped into where the houses should not be. But they are there. So this makes, the like, the Libra Ascendant a very karmic placement. But they do have a sociable face on, and they can fit in any crowd. And you know, they're just like, they can mirror off other people. They are known as the mirror for a reason, because they can just fit in anything. And you know, they keep structure in their 12th house. They yearn for structure a little bit. They don't, they don't want to fit in everything. Still want to be mutable, like Virgo is since Virgo was signed before them, but they kind of, like, you know, want to not, well, they are also, like, Libra ascendants are also very drained from trying to fit in everywhere. So, when, so, you know, when they're in their 12th house, 
a Virgo, they're very, you know, critical about themselves, probably. Because Virgo is the critical sign. They're the critics. Um, like, I don't really know what else to say to that, but... <laughs> They um probably are like, you know, I could have done this, or I could have done that in their dreams. They're the ones who have the dreams about wetting their pants on stage, or, you know, only wearing their underwear on stage. They're those kind, that that's the dreams that they have. It's very hard on themselves, because, you know, they can fit in anything, and they don't have an exact face, so. That's what it does. Another sign that doesn't really exactly have a nice face on these sun is Pisces. Well, they do have a nice face. I mean, they just don't have an exact face. They can show people anything because there's Neptune there. So people might get the wrong impression at first, and then they get to know them a little bit. Like, you know, second time they meet them, they're going to get a different impression. It's how Neptune works. I don't know how to explain a Neptune ascendant. They can come off as any way they want to. Well, actually, no. They have no control over that. They can come off as anything, and they don't control it. Sorry, I was talking about Libra there. But yeah, Neptune just is a total, vast, delusional planet. And Pisces rules it, and when Pisces is on the Ascendant, Neptune's a chart ruler. Oh boy, this person is going to give off many, many, many impressions. But behind that they have Aquarius, which is somewhat structured since they're the sub-ruler of Saturn. I don't know if you believe in that, but, you know, I do. Um, and they also rule Uranus, which is rebellion and socialize and like, social networks. Like, networking. And also there's Saturn there, um, which keeps them in check. So, you know, that's what Aquarius does. So, you know, Pisces, unlike Libra, though probably wants to let their inner um, thoughts that aren't really accepted by society out. Well, they want to, but, you know, they want to let all those thoughts go and, hey, you know, I think that would be better to do, and it'll seem a little rebellious, and their, you know, Neptunian face may not be the perfect face to express those things, because... It, you know, those ideas may come off really wrong, and they may express it in a wrong way, and people will probably hate them. So they internalize their rebellion, and probably their networking, because they don't probably don't know who to open up with, because everyone gets this different um, face from them. So I think, so you know, this also results in really weird dreams. In a sense that Pisces just has Uranus there. Uranus is weird. It's rebellion. They may have really random things in their dreams, like an Aries or Aquarius. Not Aries. No, not Aquarius. I mean, it is an Aquarius one. An Aries or Gemini, 12th house. There may be randomness there. It's more structured. It's not fast-paced. And it's just really weird. There might be psychedelic colors, probably. I don't know. Whenever I think of Aquarius, I think of Andrew Van Wingarden. So yeah, their dreams might be just one big giant MGMT music video. And there might be, like, and there is meaning there, because there, it is about social, like, you know, your race is about social networks and rebellion, so it is, a, like, you know, Aquarians do make some interesting artists. Andrew Van Wingarden's actually an Aquarius son, so that's also why I think of MGMT whenever I think of Aquarius, because, you know, that's who their lead singer is. So, you know, their dreams are probably like one big giant MGMT video. Might not make sense at first, but it's structured, and it does say things that many people might not believe in. Or they do. But it's all about independence that they're trying to shove down as Pisces Ascendants. So yeah, these are just- I'm sorry this video kind of <laughs> went on for a while, but these are the Ascendants. I feel just have really weird dreams for these reasons, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry that I stumbled a little bit, like I said. I just am really out of focus right now. I need to get myself in 
balance and check, you know, focusing on the bigger picture and not getting lost in details. So yeah, I hope you have a good day. Um, I'm also filming this at night, but I do hope you have a good day if you're watching this in the daytime. Or if, you're having a, or if you're watching this in nighttime, I hope you have a good night. And I'll see you next video. Peace.